Our Albertsons shoppers donate to Goodwill because it's convenient and they always get a receipt. I donate to Goodwill because Goodwill keeps things like computers out of our landfills. I donate to Goodwill because Goodwill turns gently used goods into jobs for people in our community. I donate to Goodwill because when I give Southern Nevada benefits. Donate. Donate. It's easy to donate. Shop and donate today. Pahrump's Goodwill is located in the former Ace Hardware Building. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing, specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. News is also brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Tonight on News 46, the town board gets paid 100% of zero. A hit and run driver is charged and Sue Loudon speaks up about her campaign. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Monique Mitchell. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, March 26, 2014. I'm Monique Mitchell for News 46. Well, the Pahrump Town Board agenda last night contained an item asking for the board to be compensated for a 100% increase for all five board members. The Pahrump Town Board currently receives no money for their positions and historically has never received pay. They do, however, get reimbursed for travel and other expenses incurred while conducting official town business. News 46 spoke to Town Board Chair Harley Culkin this afternoon, who stated that he placed the item on the on the consent agenda, which passed to let people know that the town board members received no pay for work conducted. He said 100% of zero is zero. Well, Michael Mack was sentenced to a maximum of 20 years in prison for sexually abusing a mentally handicapped woman over a period of years. The 70-year-old was arrested in April of 2013, along with co-defendant 81-year-old Albert Gatsky, 65-year-old George Cor George Quiroga, all were charged with sexually assaulting the same woman. The psycho evaluation of Matt came back that he has a high risk to reoffend if re if released. He also allegedly has other accusations he is facing pertaining to possible past sexual allegations in other jurisdictions. The 45-year-old woman he abused had the mental capacity of a three or four-year-old child. Well, new satellite images provided by a French by a French defense firm show 122 objects floating in the southern Indian Ocean, not far from the other satellite sightings that could that could be related to missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. When photographed by the satellite on Sunday, the objects were scattered over 150 square mi 154 sorry square miles. That's about the size of. Denver, Colorado. The location recorded by the satellite was within the search area scoured Wednesday by a dozen aircraft from six nations. And after the break, Marty Saltz will discuss children and organ transplants. A new device is changing the game for kids with heart failure. Before the options were to wait in the hospital. The story next on Prescription Health. This portion of the news is brought to you by Albertsons. You're in for something fresh.
Welcome back to News 46. Well, when children experience heart failure, they often need a transplant to replace their defected organ, but waiting can take time. Now there's a new device that helps the heart do its job without stopping a child from being a kid. Marty Saltz reports. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment. 775-751-7100. It doesn't look like much, but a day out like this is big for 11-year-old Jackie Fair. That's cute, Jackie. Last summer, Jackie and her mom found out she had heart failure and needed a transplant. It was a surprise. I had to step out of the room, to be honest with you. It was, it was, a, little, it was a little much to take. While she waits for a transplant, Jackie wears this, the heartware device. They used to be bigger, bulkier so only adults could receive them. The pump is implanted in the heart and attaches to a battery pack outside the body. It takes blood out of the left ventricle and pumps it into the aorta, helping the heart function when it's too weak to do so on its own. The device is small enough to be used in kids and it's portable so patients don't have to stay in the hospital. It's a beautiful thing to let a child go home while they're still in heart failure. Jackie says the device has given her freedom. If I wasn't on here, I'd probably be in the hospital and not allowed to do anything taped up to the wall. She's looking forward to her transplant, but says she's happy she can still be a kid while she waits. I'm Marty Salt reporting. Patients have to be at least 65 pounds to receive the device. The hardware is a left ventricular assist device commonly called an LVAD. It's been used in adults for years, but only recently in children. In fact, fewer than 10 children's hospitals in the nation have used this device. And we have an update regarding a three-vehicle hit-and-run accident that occurred on Highway 160 and Highway 372. Sheriff's officers arrested 40-year-old Dimitri Guajardo, who allegedly told police he had consumed two 24-ounce beers and reportedly failed the field sobriety test conducted on scene. Police located him after he fled the accident scene in the desert near Crawford Way after he hit two vehicles in the intersection, injuring one person. Guajardo was arrested for DUI duty to stop to at a scene of an accident involving property damage and driving with a license suspended or revoked. He was transported to Nye, to the Nye County Detention Center. And candidate for Lieutenant Governor Sue Loudon spoke to News 46 Deanna O'Donnell about her campaign. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor and this is a great big state that we have. Pahrump is one of the key parts of the state because everybody votes in Nye County. You know, it doesn't matter if they're from Tonopah or right here in Pahrump. It seems that you get a 80 some plus turnout. So it's a very important area for me to really capture in this uh, this run this time. You know, I'm somebody who's been in the uh, tourism business for at least 30 years now. And the main job of Lieutenant Governor is you are the chairman of tourism of the whole state. So I'd like to take some of the things that I've done in Clark County and bring it up to the whole state. For instance, I was part of the group that brought the rodeo back to town. Not this time around, but everybody sees how hard it is to capture big events like that. But many years ago, I helped capture the rodeo. I brought the Miss America pageant to Las Vegas. I brought the jumping horses, the international jumping horses. These are the things I'd like to do statewide to promote our state. Whoever is the lieutenant governor is really the face of Nevada, the one who goes out and really promotes Nevada. And I have the energy and the enthusiasm to do it, and I hope it's, it's uh, a place for me. Definitely Nevada has so many different uh, areas. Uh, you've got the mountains, and uh, we have so many recreational activities here. What some of the things that you would really like to focus on? Well, what I would like to do is concentrate on the film industry moving to Nevada. You know, we have so many places, of course Las Vegas, of course the Strip, but we've got the beautiful rubies up in Elko and the cowboy country up there, and we've got this beautiful Sierras, which hopefully the Olympics are going to come to, you know, in the next couple of years. We've got so much, the wineries, we have so many things. I, I think if the film industry from California would be moving here to Nevada, they'd see that they don't have to go very far to film their 
TV commercials or their document documentaries or whatever they're filming. You know, we also have the beautiful area up in Hawthorne. If you're going to film something on Afghanistan or Iraq, you don't have to go any further than Hawthorne, Nevada, where we train our military to go over to Afghanistan and Iraq. And I'd like to be the person who shows the film industry around Nevada to say we're so diverse here and that we need to spend more money and more time here and have that be our number one, one of our number one industries. Well, an action item on last night's town board agenda was to have the current community pool outfitted for year-round use. We spoke to Rachel Roberts, who is spearheading the effort. What I am addressing is the benefits of us moving towards a year-round pool, utilizing the current town pool. Instead of building a new one as an indoor facility, actually making this one more indoor? Um, not necessarily making it more indoor, but making it available for year-round usage. And there's a couple options, mm -hmm. um, and that's up to the town on which way to go. Um, but what it's about is being able to create the programs and have activities and all of the things that are involved in an aquatics center being made available to the community of Pahrump. Why did you decide that you wanted to make this a project of yours? Well, I have actually never done anything like this before, mm -hmm. but we moved here uh, this past summer and we went to the pool mm -hmm. and when I discovered that the pool closed mm -hmm. for the winter, I started looking for other pools. And this is the only pool available to the community that's not private mm -hmm. and um, or that you have to buy a membership to or mm -hmm. anything like that. And it's, it's for the general public and I just talked to a lot of people and saw the need for it and started to look into it a little further. So what are the options that you guys are looking at? Well, <clears throat> the option that I am really um, uh, in encouragement for myself is putting a cover over the pool and heating it, mm -hmm. which makes it the, it's the first step to making it year-round availability. And after that, then you can go for um, other types of covers in the future or things like that as things develop. Mm -hmm. But just to get it up to par so that it can be used year round, that's really when you are talking about heating the pool. Are you guys looking at grants that might be available for this? There are certain programs. Um, uh, USA Swimming offers a program called Splash that you can get involved in, and they help um, work with pools. Also, there's a lot of free help on how to make sure that the facility is putting back into the community as much as the community is giving to the facility. Do you have any kind of idea of what the bottom line money-wise is right now at this point? Well... <clears throat> The bottom money line to initially set up something in this area is um, in, is in the uh, sixty thousand dollar range, um, in and that's for making it available for year round. And that's with actually staffing it, right? That is not with staffing, and that was going to be my next comment. Is that that is actually what has to happen to the pool in order for that to be put to use as such? Staffing, um, funds, and and all of the things co that are cost in maintaining is what if they want to go forward with this, then they're going to look into that before doing it. Then we'll look into where it is today, what they'd like to do with it, and see if it can make sense financially at that point. The Prump Town Board last night decided to direct staff to look into the matter of possibly having a year-round year pool for public use. Well, folks, keep it here because we're going to have more local news for you after this break.